Welcome to the third Character Chaos Tournament, or Character Chaos 3, if you want to go by the uh, whole Super Bowl type of thing. Super yeah. Bowl 28, Super Bowl 30, Character Chaos Tournament 3. I am this Lord. With me, as always, is Lord Comet. Howdy! And Ben, Mr. Pumpkin. Hello! And we are your hosts for this awesome tournament. Yay! Which pits random characters from various sections of pop culture against each other in a battle to the death. Single animation style. This is our third time around. We have had two winners. We had Neo from The Matrix. Mm -hmm. And that was in the first tournament. And we had Bugs Bunny last week. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know how that happened, but it did. Bugs Bunny was the overall winner. That was a real... <laughs> well, he, he, he won by a hair. Oh, snap. Uh, that is so funny. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I love, I love you guys. Anywho. <laughs> um, you know what? I've got something awesome that I just figured out. Candy. Who and Benedict? Oh, man, I, I wish I had candy. No, actually, I don't have bloody papers with me. <gasps> oh, I know what you got. You got Vegemite for us, right? What? Dude, I wish I wish I had Vegemite. Um, let's see. Oh, this this will work. Uh, you know, I was so excited to get this character cast tournament started that I forgot to put the names in the hat. <laughs> <laughs> we can start this over if you want. Yeah, we'll just continue on. The thing it is, is the best part of things is. You never know what's going to happen, anything. Uh, that, is, that is me riding the fail whale into uh, <laughs> to the oblivion. <laughs> That's the whole thing about doing it live, boys. You never know what's going to happen. Something may epically fail. But at the same time, it's all good because that's what makes it fun and real. Hells yes. Now this will take just a second because i got to write the names down and actually get them going. But if you guys want, you can talk about some of the various characters who are uh, competing, and uh, yeah, go from there. Actually, I would like I would get our thing started with our starting theme that I have conveniently ripped off. Here you go, folks. The starting themes. The audience is now deaf. Nah. <laughs> now they're deaf. Okay. <laughs> I came back just in time to hear that. <laughs> there I don't you think go. That anything can kill Santa killers. I mean, it just seems impossible to kill them. Anyway, and what what the very thing that started for the match? Here we go. Mm. Let's get ready to rumble. Yay. 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 So what do you guys think about some of the characters as I hurriedly rush and write them down? Yes! Yes! Yes. Yes. I think it's going to be really interesting because they're all kind of... Like, more, some of them are uber-powered. Especially Gilbert Gottfried. Who are we going to beat him? With his commanding nobody. voice? Nobody. Nobody um, can beat Gilbert Gottfried. I was I think Unicron should win because I like Unicron. But I like Galactus better than him anyway. Galactus Pizza. Are you kidding me? What about Dolph Lundgren? I don't oh, know, I don't, yikes, I don't, quit. I don't, I don't really know much about him yet. Um I know a lot about him actually. He just has a weird name. I think the Oompa Loompa's cool too, but I like Oompa Loompas. <laughs> oh, you mean, uh, what's his name? 
The the guy from Rocky. Uh, yep, that would be the Russian Draco. boxer. But Ivan yes. Draco. And his Russian drinking um, psychopath. I think he's kind of like a bison, except he's Russian. He's not Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but it's part of the button. Hey, we could use Darth Vader in a future tournament. Oh, I, pl I, I, I've already, I've already went through my way to submit the man. It's just a matter of getting him in there. Awesome. Until then, bite my shiny metal ass. <laughs> if you can hear that, I'm currently tearing the uh, paper so that we actually have the characters. As I said yesterday, I've got balls of steel. <laughs> And the crowd goes wild! This is just proof that we're professionals. Yep. Proof we're professionals by uh, buying time for the, G or the, G the big jihad himself, known as Mr. Slora, get things going. Because he's an idiot. No, he's not an idiot. He's just... Um, Enthusiastic. Enthusiastic would be more word. Yeah, I'd say so. But don't worry about it. Nice cover. Matata. What a wonderful phrase. What does that have to do with this? Matata. Ain't no peasant parade. No worries. It means no worries for the rest of your day. Kaboom. <laughs> no worries. Oh, I would love that. Yep. Have All the angels in heaven up. say. Uh, anyway, that's Simone and Pumbaa go up against like uh, I don't know, a gladiator or something. Deadpool. <laughs> a Deadpool. Or have them go against this little lady. Samus Saran. My favorite heroine. My favorite heroine is I don't know. Uh, let me think. I had a joke there, but I decided not to say it. I know where you're going with that joke, too, bud. I yeah. see what you did there. I see. But it's... The seagulls are upon us. It's a bunch of Steven Seagulls. Boo! Airplane. Oh, bomber. Okay. Oh my God! I've got the characters. Oh, we just gotta mix them up now. And while we wait. What's ironic is I actually did a review on Sonic, uh, the original one, not too long ago, and posted it on YT. It was quite fun. I imagine. Truly epic. All right, we've got characters. Yay! Yay! And now all but one are going to die for our pleasure. E -yabba -dabba -doo! I hope Sin of Killer wins because he's just too overpowered. <laughs> yeah, that's well. That's that's one good thing about the tournament. They uh, they get retired if they survive. We no more go. Contest of champions after this. Yeah, actually, that's that's an idea. We can do that later on. Uh huh. Now, the very first character in Character Chaos Tournament Three. <laughs> We have Unicron! Yay! Holy shit! shit, shit, shit. Your turn! Unicron from the Transformers, Major Powers, pretty much the god of chaos. Early odds of survival, 90%. You think? Is uh, the highest early odds of survival yet in the character chaos tournament. Um, 
The eternal archenemy of his twin brother Primus, known as the Dark God, the Chaos Bringer, the Planet Eater, is dedicated to consuming the multiverse. His goal is to bring an end to the annoying creation, boasting independence around him, and find peace by becoming the living center of a swirling infinite torrent of nothingness at the end of all things. If that's not a cool bio, I don't know what is. Hadouken! Um, with his powers uh, integrated into his systems are incomprehensible quantum computers which calculate probabilities forward and backwards in time in perpetuity and perpetuity giving his processors an ever-changing and evolving map of the multiverse. Some of his powers include regeneration, energy absorption, time travel, increase or decrease his size, virtually unlimited weapons and ammunition, and his only known weakness is Primus's essence contained in the Matrix within Optimus Prime's chest. Oh, and also, did we mention he destroyed the universe? Yes, and in his first incarnation, he was um, not really a Transformer. He was just like a disembodied... Uh, energy of chaos yeah he's like a he's a thing yeah he's a big yeah. honking robot like really 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 honking big he's like the Death Star but a robot and yeah a yeah effectively yes now we're using him in the tournament we're using him currently in his robot form but he might bring out his uh, essence form oh he's trapped in his robot form too. Yeah, he's trapped in the robot form. Kill the robot, and who knows what happens. Maybe the essence survives and uh, kills whatever killed him. Who knows? Anywho, Unicron, probably the most powerful character yet to be revealed in the tournament. Yep. I cry for whoever fights him. And, oh God, we are starting with the battle. The battle that has raged on the internet since time began. Unicron versus Galactus. Holy shit. Unicron wins, I just have to say, even though I love Galactus, he's my favorite Marvel character. I um, was not expecting this to be... to happen immediately. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that to, uh, to happen until maybe later in the tournament, but no, they're going up against them, each other now. And the problem with Unicron is if he wins... Then Sano Killers is gonna win. <laughs> Cause Galactus might be like the most powerful living thing in the universe, but he still he still can't really compete with something that destroyed the entire universe before. I yeah. think that with even with all his powers, Unicron will smash him to bits in his essence form. Because then he was basically <laughs> ultimate chaos and actually destroyed the universe. Well, Excellent. before we get too far into it, let's uh, go over his bio. His name, of course, is Galactus from Marvel Comics. His major powers, pretty much anything he thinks of. Early odds of survival, also 90%. Galactus was created by the union between the sentience of the previous universe and Galen, and was described by the Human Torch as the physical metamorphosed embodiment of a cosmos. Galactus considers himself a higher being than all non-abstracts, maintaining his existence by devouring planets that have potential for supporting life. This has resulted in the elimination of entire extraterrestrial civilizations on numerous worlds. His powers... He, he wields the power cosmic and can employ it to produce nearly any effect he desires, including the molecular restructuring and transmutation of matter, the teleportation of objects, and even an entire galaxy, across space or time, Size alteration, the projection of energy with indeterminable destructive force, the erection of nearly impenetrable force fields, the creation of interdimensional and intradimensional portals, telepathy, te telekinesis, pyrokinesis, and a form of cosmic awareness. He is also capable of creating sentient life, resurrecting the dead, manipulating mortal souls, memories, and emotions, and restoring dead planet planets and populations in every detail. Uh... He's one of the oldest, most powerful beings in the Marvel Universe, and has only been defeated due to his hunger. As such, because we use the most powerful version of every character in the Character Cast Tournament, he's competing at maximum power with no hunger at all, which has not even been described in the comics yet. Woo! Because he's always a little hungry, so he's even more powerful than he's been described in comics thus far. Uh, yeah. 
Where do you begin with this one? I, I know these are basically two complete and utter powerhouses, the most powerful cr characters ever in the tournament. Comet, what do you think? Huh. Well, we got a giant hawking robot, and then the other one does everything else. Gee, oh, I wonder. I thought we were using these guys in the most powerful, so we should use Unicron in his non-robot form, I think. Because well, although we're going to assume that once the robot form is destroyed, his uh, abstract form gets released as well. Oh no! Okay. So, so basically, that would probably be most powerful because first you got to overcome the giant freaking robot, and if you manage to do that, you still have his god essence sort of thing that you have to worry about. Well, if you it will if you if you had the little thing where Rodimus Prime uses, then you can kill him easy. Yeah, that yeah, the spark of the matrix or the the Autobot leadership matrix. Yeah, it goes. I open those up and look what happened. Boom! His legs blow. Up. Boom! His uh, parts of body blow. Up. Boom! Some of his some of his head starts to explode. Boom! The eye goes out. Stuff like that. I'll let you guys uh, discuss it for a second, but I do have an idea. I, I vote Galactus because he's just a bigger badass. Um, uh, Unicron is the force is the ultimate embodiment of destruction. What 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 Galactus is? Not that. All right, I'll give you guys my idea and let you ponder it for a second. Okay. Now, first off, Unicron is damn near invincible because he's he's destroyed entire universes. Galactus comes from a destroyed universe. We don't know what destroyed it. Or at least I don't. I did some research, but I couldn't figure it out. But Galactus has something... a couple things in his favor. One, he has an entire cosmic awareness. He is probably the most intelligent thing in any universe, period. He knows things that nothing else can... Like, if, if anything could get into his mind and probably go insane because he knows that much. You've got so mail. If, if there's anybody who might know how to defeat Unicron other than the Transformers, it would be Galactus because he has that all-knowing cosmic uh, knowledge. Secondly, he also possesses more advanced technology than anything else. He is the most advanced Therefore, I think that Galactus could potentially create the Matrix that uh, could destroy Unicron just by knowing and saying, oh, look, it's Unicron. Boom, there's the Matrix. Boom, you're dead. Uh, but I'll leave it up to you guys to, uh, to discuss what may or may not happen from there. I still vote that Galactus wins, just bottom line, because he's just so much more powerful. No, you see, he might be, okay, he's only, he's only as powerful as the, and he's, he's the most powerful living creature, but he's not as powerful as the abstracts, and Unicron is an abstract. And even though his physical form can be destroyed by the Autobot leader, um, what is it called, the Autobot Matrix of uh, Leadership, you still have his spirit to worry about. I mean, you can't just like destroy that with the. I mean, he, Primus tried to, and he didn't get it. He just he had the only way he could defeat Unicron was locking him up inside the planet. Am That's I a good point. Yeah. Okay, that wasn't good. That's a good point. But you've got this again, virtually unlimited knowledge. Possessed within Galactus. Unlimited knowledge. So again, it's, it sort of goes back to uh, remember when we had uh, Neo versus the Blob in the first character cast tournament. It was like the Blob was basically unstoppable. You could freeze yep. it, but it could probably come back from that. You don't know how to kill it. But Neo, being in control of the Matrix, was the only person who could possibly figure out a way because he understood how everything worked. That is how I see Galactus. He understands 
how Unicron works, and if there is a weakness, he would be able to figure it out. The only weakness, or well, he can't destroy Unicron, but he can put him into stasis for an indefinite amount of time. So that's basically just like destroying him, I guess. That's effectively getting rid of him, and that's what we want to do. <laughs> well, now he's he's, he's got to die. He can't die. It has to be a thing to the death. Well, let's just say you, um, Galactus uses the ultimate nullifier and destroys him with that, because that would destroy anything. Yep. He could do that. Even though I really like Unicron, I wish we could just send him to the, his universe, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you, do you guys uh, both come to an agreement with that? Yeah, and that's a very unlikely agreement, because I really... I like both of them. Well, that's what I say to that. Hasta la vista, baby. At least this means he can come back. All right, we can yeah, use him. He can come back in a, in a future uh, tournament. Oh, well, Unicron, yeah. yeah. Let's just say that uh, Galactus uses the ultimate nullifier, destroys all of existence, including Unicron, and then he creates a new universe again. Even though he can't really do that, but okay. Okay, yeah, whatever. <laughs> let's... Re- because we'll be here all night if we don't. Because <laughs> he's, yeah, okay, okay, so he's powerful. Dead. Unicron is dead. Unicron is dead. We've solved what so many others on the internet couldn't do. And that's because no one else wanted to back down. Yeah, nobody wants to back down. Good on you, Pumpkin, for backing down on it. Oh, and we have the uh, third major ah. heavy hitter in the tournament. The Saint of Killers saunters into the ring, or wherever they happen to be fighting. Saint of Killers from the Preacher series of comics. I never heard of this one. Uh, I'll go over his powers. From Preacher yeah. Comics, he is the... Basically, the living incarnation of death. Early odds of survival also set at 90%. Um, I'll go over a quick history with him. Originally a soldier of the Confederate Army, he was known for his almost bestial, bestial savagery when it came to killing. He loved killing so much that after the war, he became a bounty hunter and collected Native American scalps for profit. He eventually rescues a, a young woman whom he fell in love and had a daughter with. When his family becomes ill, he left to find medicine, but was stalled by a gang of outlaws, which caused him to ultimately be unable to claim the medicine in time, and his family died. With little compa- What little compassion he had left was now gone, and he stormed the gang hideout and murdered everyone in sight, including an innocent hostage, until he ran out of bullets and was killed by being impaled with a shovel. He went to hell, but the pure hatred emanating from him literally froze hell over, much to Satan's displeasure. Satan and the angel of death made a deal that the man who would become the saint of killers needed to leave hell, but he would take over the soul-collecting duties of the angel of death. Death's sword was melted down and reforged into two Walker Colt revolvers that would kill anything, never miss their target, never leave his possession, and never run out of bullets. Thus, he becomes the saint of killers. He immediately repays Satan by shooting him with his new guns, killing him instantly. The Saint of Killers could potentially be the most powerful character. Uh, He is impervious to harm. Bullets bounce off of him. A direct hit from a tank does not affect him. Being underneath a collapsing mountain simply means digging himself out. And being hit in the chest with a nuclear missile causes no damage to him or his clothes, though he might remark not enough gun. He can easily knock away tanks with a simple kick, and he can be hit by a speeding truck without flinching. He's an expert marksman, able to draw his guns at vast speeds. Uh, his guns, again, possess unlimited ammunition, never jam, and never need to be unloaded. They always hit their mark, even piercing tank armor to reach their intended target, and always inflict fatal injury or death, regardless of the circumstances or nature of the victim, including angels and demons. Even God and the devil are not immune to the bullets, considering the fact that he has killed them both. So there you have it, Saint of Killers. Versus... Quite possibly, quite possibly the vicar. <laughs> Versus Adolf Hitler. <laughs> Good old Adolf Hitler. Um, nine, nine, nine. Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler dies. 
Yeah, really, he does. Adolf Hitler, I kick his ass. Very quickly, even though he doesn't stand a chance, major power, he was the commander of the Third Reich, 35% early odds of survival. Now reduce that to about 1%. Uh, yeah. Uh, little known fact, he wasn't just uh, a charismatic talker or anything. He actually served uh, in World War One and was a decorated soldier. Uh, da, 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 da. Where is it at? Where is it at? He was twice decorated for bravery, receiving the Iron Cross second class in 1914 and Iron Class Iron Cross first class in 1918. He's survived being shot in the groin. Explains where his love life went. Yeah, and he was choked with mustard gas. In short, he's not just some charismatic brainwasher. He's a warrior who knew how to survive major battles. He also had a short man's disease. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah, he's like 5'2". <laughs> he was a short dude. As I I've watched History Channel quite a few goes, and it gives the exact specs on that sort of sucker. As I said, he got his guillotines blowed off, so he's like, ah, ah, Lord Houghton! Lord Houghton! Get him in the of light! Oi! <laughs> and I think he gets a little shorter indeed, because I think his head uh, is about to get shot off. Yeah! Hitler! Unless uh, anyone has any uh, objections, Hitler dies again. <laughs> Why did we put Hitler in the tournament? Just so we could see him die again. Yeah! Alrighty, so that was an easy one. Uh, I'm saying a killer that wastes no time. Well, here you go. <laughs> Ooh, perfect. I thought you'd like. <laughs> hey, I'm always prepared with a nice button. And coming into the tournament, next off is Lord Voldemort from the Harry Potter series. Jesus Christ, I just finished watching him last night. Uh, major powers, immortality and magic. Early eyes of survival were set at 70%. Yeah, he's a pretty powerful character, according to the book. Oh yeah, uh, let's see. Here's some of the things that he can do. Voldemort stated as being the most knowledgeable wizard that ever existed, and that's according to Dumbledore. So if Dumbledore says it, you know it's probably true. He can kill anything with his killing curse, cause excruciating pain at will, fly unassisted, and by the way, he's the only wizard in the Harry Potter universe capable of that feat. Yay. Transmute. Transmute objects, read minds, shield his own mind, open locks, deflect magic spells, cast fireballs, control water, control serpents, and it is implied that he is capable of far more. He is also immortal and can only be killed by destroying seven horcruxes, which are ordinary objects that contain portions of his soul. Which uh, they destroy yeah, most so of them, and the, uh, they destroy some of them in the beginning movies, though. Yeah. But because he's at his own most powerful, we'll just pretend that he's at uh, full power. And he's got his Horcruxes out there. So unless somebody knows about those, uh, I don't think they're going to win. Uh, I don't think so against. either. Especially since you got the Elder Wand in the last movie. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> well, just for uh, shits and giggles, so to speak... We're going to say that Gilbert Gottfried has all seven Horcruxes in front of him. <clears throat> and he knows that they contain Voldemort's soul. And will, he, that's will, not he be, will he be able to destroy them before Voldemort shoots him with the killing curse? Hey, uh, oh, have, have, have a cadaver and uh, here's his Gilbert Gottfried's chances. Does he win? Does he win? Nope. I don't think he does. No! <laughs> Bader said it best. That's awesome. I I love do that. you think he has any chance, even with all the Horcruxes right in front of him? He'll probably annoy Voldemort to death. Even though Gilbert Gottfried's one of, uh, one of my fave comedians, he'll annoy people to death. He, his voice starts grinding your ears after a couple of minutes. And it is like... Uh, yeah, that's actually one of his powers that's, uh... Annoying! 
I mean, you know, there's some people who are just annoying not trying to be. There's just some people who are annoying just on principle. Uh, now, just to be fair, I'll go over what Gilbert Gottfried can do, which is not much. Uh, he's from Brooklyn, New York. Major power is insulting everything. Early odds of survival, 15%. Gottfried can insult anyone at any time and specializes in getting people riled up. He cracked jokes about 9-11 just three weeks after the disaster and was recently fired from his job as the voice of the Aflac Duck for making tsunami jokes on his Twitter account. <laughs> he is very likely to insult his opponents to the to the point of near insanity than simply walk up and kick them in the groin. <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately don't have a groin. <laughs> in the tournament don't even have groins. Sorry. Including Hitler. Ooh. So, uh... So how fast is this going to be? Let's put it this way. Bye-bye! <laughs> Any chance at all of Gottfried uh, distracting Baltimore with his uh, insults? No. No. Baltimore just says... <laughs> no! Gottfried! <laughs> I don't even think that's going to help. No. Avada Kedavra, or whatever you, you say, and, uh... Avada Kedavra, but yeah! He's a goner. EXPERIENCE! If I've got to choke down another one of these moldy crackers! No, that was terrible. No, that was just horrible. I could... I, I do worse, so I can't really say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, he's moving on. Gilbert Gottfried didn't stand a chance. And we've got Oompa Loompa Doompa Dee Doo and Oompa Loompa. Are you kidding me? One of those two foot nothings? Yeah, that's the uh, Oompa Loompa. Let's see. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think they have anything going in their favor. No, they got being being short in their favor. Oompa Loompa from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory or The Great Glass Elevator or Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, depending on what you're reading or what Charlie you're Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, so on and so forth. Major powers making candy. Early odds of survival, 1%. Oh. That, that is the lowest percentage of any character by far. Wait, don't Quick forget. history. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Well, their survival should be higher, because don't forget, I think, I don't know, I don't remember exactly in the books, but in the movie, the, the new one, they they say that they survived in like this horrible environment with ho lots of awful creatures that would eat them. Yeah, that's true. Uh, going quickly through their history, Oompa Loompa come from Loompa Land, which is a region of Loompa. Great, a small isolated island in the Atlantic Ocean. The Oompa Loompa would end up being preyed upon or attacked by Wang Doodles, Horn Swagglers, Horn Swaggle, ah, and, and, uh, and Snog Wangers. And those things, too, which also lived there. Wonka ended up inviting them to work at his factory to get away from their natural predators. Oompa Loompa are the only people Willy Wonka will allow to work in his factory because of the risk of industrial espionage committed by candy-making rivals. That's right. Going from monsters to slave labor. Way to go, guys. <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, Oompa Loompas have no known strengths other than candy-making. Their short stature and weak phys physicality means that the poor Oompa Loompa participating in the tournament will more than likely be annihilated. It beats being stuck in a life of servitude to a candy-making madman, though. Yeah, pretty much. As I said, basically the guys enslaved a bunch of midgets. Congratulations, you're a winner. Right? <laughs> I don't think they're enslaved. They're enslaved. They're enslaved. No, no, dude. They're enslaved. And when they, they, they get Wonka play the little yeah, flute they, to get their attention. They're, <laughs> they're, 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 they want to be enslaved. Yes. So they don't get eaten by horn swaddle. What makes you think Wonka don't eat those little Oompa Loompas just for a kick? Because he's not a cannibal? How is he not a cannibal? They're made of chocolate. <laughs> Orange maybe, chocolate. Maybe he is a cannibal. I don't know. Well, well uh, Wonka is completely Loompa. insane, so I'd say, you know, what can I say? Grab a, gra grab a short dude and eat him. <laughs> okay, whatever. What do you think the candy's made out of? No. Uh... <laughs> Uh, it, it's been we bend over and pull it out of the usual place. Yes. <laughs> you is going up against Alf. Oh dear God! Alf may eat, Alf eats him. Alf like will eat the little sucker because Alf is also known as Gordon Shumway. I watched that yes. program when I was when I was growing and I really enjoyed it. 
it, there was also a cartoon after him too. It was actually I love, it was actually I love the cartoon song. theme song. The theme song yeah, is pretty good. Now, Alpha, for anybody who doesn't know who Alpha is, is from the Off series. Uh, major power is huge appetite and being snarky. Early odds of survival, 15%. Um, da, 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 da. Alpha is short for alien life form. Alpha came from the planet Melmac, which was destroyed by a nuclear disaster and is the reason Alpha was in a spacecraft, which eventually crashed on Earth, where he was taken in by the Tanners, a family living in suburban Los Angeles, California. Yep. He shared many adventures with the Tanners and has a curious craving for cats. He also has a bit of a snarky attitude and loves to throw, to throw around one-liners. He's survived the destruction of his planet and crashing a spacecraft into Earth, but can he survive the character cast tournament? Uh, I get uh, the Oompa Loompa? Yes! I get the Oompa Loompa? Yeah, I think he's going to, uh... He'd probably give it a wedgie, and while it's sitting there trying to figure it out, he'd just kick it repeatedly in the groin and... <laughs> I wonder why Alf doesn't have, like, PTSD, because his whole, his entire race is dead. <laughs> yeah, that would kind of... Well, no, he did have, like, a uh, a girlfriend that survived, but I don't know what happened to her. Oh, is this, like, is this, like, the saying, like, Superman, where, you know, he's supposed to be the only one, and then thousands more pop up? Yeah, it's one of those, it's one of those theories, that it's, it's a Superman problem, where Superman, the planet exploded, but somewhere nearby, there's another planet that goes... Hey, there's a sister planet over here that would magically survive, but you know only Krypton blew up. But there's some random schmuck over there on the, on the moon, sitting right over, you know, a couple of light years away, and going, "Hey, there's more Kryptonians over here that are locked in a little case." Now, where do you think Supergirl came from? Uh, the oh, I forget the planet. Well, it depends what continu- continuity you're looking at. But anyway, we let's get on with the show. So, uh, the Oompa Loompa gets kicked in the groin till he dies. And eaten like a cat. Like, Alf puts him in a cat suit and eats him. And Alf cannibalizes the Oompa Loompa. It's not cannibalism because he's not the same species. That's true. Well, he preys upon Oompa Loompas. That's Alf's new power. He eats Oompa Loompas and grows in size. And bullets. (laughs) Huh? I can't believe Alf made it to the next round. Yeah, Alf lived that time. (laughs) <laughs> he, he was fighting someone more pussified than he was. Get it? Yep. That's a uh-huh. <laughs> cat joke. But anyway, let's proceed. Next guy coming into the tournament. We have Marv Albert. Marv Albert. What? Uh, for those who don't know who Marv Albert, ah, Albert is. Oh, Fat oh, Albert. I said that Marv that. Albert is like, what? He has a list. Marv of- Albert. From Brooklyn, New York, he is a legendary sports announcer. Early odds of survival have him at 10%. Um, Albert, the voice of many Super Bowls, NBA Finals, Stanley Cup Finals, World Series, and more. His commentary is unrivaled except perhaps by John Madden, only because of the turducken. Uh, Albert comes in obviously as a major underdog here in the tournament. He was probably supposed to provide commentary and accidentally found himself as a contender. Uh, regardless, he has a mean streak that could give him an edge, as he was charged with forcible sodomy against a 42-year-old woman in 1997, which got him axed from NBC. The charge was eventually dropped. Uh, could that dark side, though, give him the edge that he needs? Who knows? No. Depends on, depends who, on who he fights. Depends on who he's fighting. I bet he, he can really beat the Loompa. That's proof, though. He can he can overpower a 42-year-old woman. Oh, oh my that, gosh, she's yeah. so powerful. <laughs> and stepping into the ring, we have Artemis and Trary. Okay, he kills I'm him. A- Artemis kills him. I'm assuming I, s- I said that correctly. I don't know. Uh, did, but did, did you- basically, Artemis, uh, Saint Killer, Unicron, and Galactus are the main contenders of this fight. Everybody else is just eh. Even Voldemort probably. Oh yeah, there's there's actually some good characters in this one. Uh, Artemis and Trey, for people who don't know, from the Forgotten Realm novels, uh, unrivaled assassination skills and magical weapons. His early odds of survival were put at sixty five percent, though that could go up. It depends. Why? Uh, let's see. This is kind of long, so I'll quickly go through it. Artemis is a tactical master, taking advantage every advantage offered to him and seeking to create more. He's also a very fast learner. 
Even if he observes a particular combat maneuver just once or twice, he's able to adapt it to his choice of weapons and duplicate it effectively in battle. Uh, he's also excellent at improvising. He can use his surroundings to excellent effect when he would otherwise be at a severe disadvantage. He's a consummate warrior, com combining his ambidexterity, thieving training, and warrior's weapon skills to be one of the most dangerous swordsmen in all the realms. A few men, uh, who cares about this sword? Um, he also wields, ah, here we go. He wields a vampiric dagger that siphons the life force of anything it cuts and transfers it to Entrari. It's even capable of absor absorbing the very souls of its victims and can heal its wielder back from grave injuries when siphoning the life form of a, vic a victim. He has used this dagger to absorb a shade and has taken on characteristics of it by doing so. In addition to the dagger, he also wields a magical sword known as uh, Charon's or Sharon's claw, however you want to pronounce it. It can be wielded... It can Da, 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 da. It can be wielded, willed by its wielder to leave trails of ash in the air, uh, basically like a smoke screen or whatever. It can produce a strange black glow to act as light and renders its wielder invisible to improvision. It's also enchanted so that even a small nicker cut will prove eventually fatal. So all he has to do is nick you and you die. In addition, the gauntlet that comes with the sword can detect, absorb, and redirect magical energy as well as psionics. Good luck if Baltimore goes up against them. Uh, anyone who touches the sword immediately has their mind assaulted, and only those of immeasurable willpower can safely wield it. He and another guy called Grandmaster Kane are the only known individuals to be able to overcome the sword's power. So, yeah. He kills him. He killed him. <laughs> I had to go over his powers for those who don't know, but yes, Artemis and Trey probably kills Marv Albert before Marv even realizes he's in the tournament. Uh, yeah, it's, pretty it's, much. It's more, it's less one-sided than putting Gilbert Godfrey against the Saint of Killers, but it's still very one-sided. Oh yeah, poor Marv Albert. I think he's announced his last. Uh, he, he announces his death. <laughs> he's his last, yeah, he's announced his last thing. Artemis and Trey moves on easily. Burn. Two more characters left in this particular round. At least it was not Bambi that got to the third round, remember? God, that was depressing, but funny at the same time. That was awesome. I was hoping he'd win. Uh, we've <laughs> we've got Dolph Lundgren. Woo! Lundgren, however you pronounce it. Dolph, Dolph, Dolph. I just like saying Dolph. Uh, it would have been funny if it was Dolph versus Adolf. But hey, anyway. that would have been funny. Uh, he is from Sweden. His major powers are bodybuilding and Kyokushin Karate. Early odds of survival, 35%. Kind of low, actually. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a pretty decent I actor, too. Wait, are you uh, talking about Ivan Draco or the actor? Not uh, the actor himself, and oh. uh, perhaps best known as Ivan Drago. In the, rock, in the movie Rocky IV. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's see. He has an impressive physique, most notably when played when he played Ivan Drago. A lesser known fact is that he holds a rank of third Dan black belt in Keo Kushin Karate and was European champion in 1980 and 81. Uh, in an interview with Sylvester Stallone, he said that during the filming of Rocky IV, Dolph hit him so hard that he had swelling around the heart and had to stay in intensive care at St. John's Hospital for four days. Sweet. Because Dolph was like that. He will kill you with a single punch. Uh, yeah. So Dolph Lundgren. Very powerful. Karate expert. Black belt. Going up against... Da -da -da -da, vanilla Ice. The ice um, can be touched, I guess. You know, like, oh, that's that's MC Hammer can't touch this. Can't touch the uh, ice. Actually, they were they were good friends. Uh, ice and Hammer. Yeah, well, Vanilla Ice is touched can't and touch he is murdered <laughs> very easily. Can't touch this. Well, okay, I got him quick, confused. Quickly, so what? Quickly before we get a uh, before we move on, just say he's from M MTV. Major power is being a white rapper. Oh, oh God, God 25%. That's not a power. <laughs> that's not a power, that's an annoyance. Yeah, his real name, Robert Matthew Van Winkle. Van Winkle? <laughs> Van Winkle? Oh, my God. I don't think so. I don't like anything named Van Winkle. 
He was a uh, he was a famous rapper in the early '90s who produced hits like "Ice Ice Baby" and "Play That Funky Music." He fell from fame after a nasty bout with his former record label, which had published a false biography about him, and he chose to distance himself from that kind of image. He also ran into trouble with the law when he pulled a gun on a homeless man who had approached him and tried to sell him a chain. Uh, in his prime, he was in relatively good physical shape. He's able to break dance and perform at high levels without tiring out, and he does carry a gun. So he does have a gun with him. Oh, God. Uh, that changes things a little bit for Mr. Dolph Lundgren. Hmm? But I'll leave it up to you guys as to decide whether uh, whether he actually has good enough aim to get Lundgren before he gets his neck snapped. What do you think, Tommy? Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> uh, pumpkin? <laughs> what do you think? Well, I think that I missed something, but... uh. Oh, he put. I think that Ralph Lundgren kills him. He punches him in the face, and his head spins around, or something comical, and he kills him. There's no way Vanilla Ice can beat him. He's not that cool. <laughs> well, we've got one vote for each. Um, good God, it comes down to me again. Silence! I kill you. <laughs> oh God, I love this. Uh, I love this job. Really? Are you just? Say, is that a legitimate? I love this job or what? Oh yeah, I'm going to say that Vanilla Ice shoots Dolph Lundgren, and Dolph doesn't give a shit. And he <laughs> proceeds on and kills him with his bad act. <laughs> he walks in and snaps uh, Vanilla Ice's neck and uh, moves on with his life. What do you guys think? I think that's about right. He shoots him the bullet, the bullet, but doesn't even penetrate, and he just goes, "You hit me, little man," and then crushes his neck. Like a pretzel. Yeah, uh, even with the gun, I don't think we can allow Vanilla Ice into the next round. No! Don't we should let him in here this we round. Should, no, we should let him win. We should let him win. <laughs> Jesus Christ. No way. No! All right, final votes. I say Dolph wins. I oh. say Dolph. Dolph wins. He gets no. shot and doesn't give a shit. Get off our stage now. You can't sing. You can't rap either. Get off my stage. Break dance yourself off this damn stage. Don't break dance off stage. Walk off the stage so and, and don't mind the tomatoes as I throw them at you. Okay. Oh boy. And that's the end of the first round. Boom! Oh, Jack! And we only have six characters left. Most of which are very powerful. This will be interesting. What is that? What does Peter Griffin have trying to do Italian have to do with this? I don't understand. It don't. It's it's called filler. Yes. Peter Griffin. Peter Griffin was killed in the last tournament. I still love Peter Griffin. I don't care what anybody says. I like him. He's fun. Peter Griffin is well, back in a giant chicken suit. Oh, that's, that's hilarious. Good, that's the good thing about the character cast tournament. The characters die, but they're back next week, just like cartoons. <sighs> All right, he's round two. Starting. And we have the Saint of Killers. First, let's go act this, I bet. Dig through the ditches and burn through the... Anyways... <laughs> And he's going up against... Wow, we called it. Galactus. Galactus Yo! wins. Galactus stomps the literal crap out of him completely. No, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't necessarily do that. I'm just going to say Galactus, all-knowing and all everything that he is, just uses the ultimate nullifier because no matter how powerful you are, the ultimate nullifier can destroy you unless you're an abstract being, which... The Sandra Killers is definitely not. Definitely. Well, is he going to use the ultimate nullifier before the Saint can even get a shot off? Because as soon as he shoots, it's over for Galactus. No, but the bullets don't only travel as fast as the speed of sound. And doesn't matter. It'll still hit its target. Regardless. But it's never been against a 
a shield, like a, a shield of any kind. It's only been against, like, physical armor. And Galactus is above God, anyway, uh, in terms of power. So I'm thinking that Galactus uses the ultimate nullifier before the other guy has a chance to shoot. He just zap. Everything's dead. What did you call the Saint of Killers? The, the what guy? <laughs> what? What did you call the Saint of Killers? What did you just call him? Uh, the, I think, what, what did I call him? I don't the know. something guy. <laughs> Anywho, um, I have, uh, I just have a little bit of difficulty pushing this one off so quickly because this is one of those battles that is insane. It's, it's two top tier characters going off and it's, it's really hard to just say, oh, well, this guy just does this and kill, kills him. First off, even if, if Galactus, like, if the original thing of Galactus stomping on him was to happen, it would not affect the Saint of Killers. He's had mountains collapse on him, and he just crawls out and goes back to killing. Uh, the ultimate nullifier quite possibly could unravel the Saint of Killers and kill him. Bye-bye. So I'll leave that up to a... You know, that could possibly happen. But the Saint of Killers... All he has to do is pull that trigger, man. Same with Galactus. Galactus yeah. could, uh, Galactus got, builds a power cosmic. Plus, he's always got, got a. Sorry. Who's got the quicker? Who's got the quicker trigger finger than Galactus or uh, the Saint? Because they're both oh, godlike God. speed. Baby. Galactus is above God. Uh, he's. I also Galactus has a herald at all times. I don't know why we didn't really. Put Silver that in. Surfer is what we forgot to add in there, but he's not in it. Well, yeah. yeah. But Galactus is never without a herald. Well, we but can pretend that the Silver is off doing something. I don't know. So even, if the so- even if the Surfer's there, uh, the Saint would just kill him. Yeah, kill him. So maybe that's it. Maybe the Saint kills the uh, Silver Surfer, and that gives Galactus enough time to uh, eliminate another universe. Yep. <laughs> and move on. <laughs> <laughs> He's just winning. He's just winning these tournaments. Just like I'm, just blowing up the universe. Boom! He's like, Give next me a universe. Pizza. <laughs> Give me a pizza. So, uh, Saint of Killers defeated by Relax. a fraction of a second. Yep. I, I think we're agreed. I can agree with that. Saint of Killers is going to be killing no more. Thankfully, because he's kind of heartless. Oh, Chris Galactus. Galactus is uh, a yeah, Galactus too. is far too powerful. Well, that's what I'm bringing the big dogs. He's the embodiment of change, basically, of destruction and life. Yeah. Also, he could have just manipulated his soul and made him mortal and killed him. And made him not death, because Galactus can just take away his powers. (laughs) Hey, that's a a possibility, too. Anywho, the scene of Killers dies. He'll be back in a later tournament, I can guarantee it. Galactus moves on and Dolph Lundgren takes his place. <laughs> what the heck? That's exactly the sound that Alf has in his mind as he enters the tournament and he looks up at Dolph. <laughs> Dolph. Oh my God, I, I just located, just I located uh, it on my Alf. soundboard. He's just, uh, he's just humming that tune to himself after slaughtering the uh, Oompa Loompa. And then he sees Dolph Lundgren before him. I, or I'm going to say that he sodomizes him and then eats him. <laughs> Wait, who who does that to who, though? Alf does it to Dolph. <laughs> <laughs> Do you realize that would be probably one of the biggest upsets in character chaos history? What's that? Alp 8 Galactus? Alf, no, no, no. Alf sodomizing Dolph Lundgren and then eating him. Man, if he wanted to eat bad actors, all he had to do is eat... eat, eat. Never mind. <coughs> no, that's what happens. <laughs> Alf versus Dolph. Dolph dies. A little, uh, a little history for before the uh, Character Chaos Tournament became official. Previous to this, this is something that me and my friends used to do in high school, just pull random names out of hats and have them fight each other. The worst upset to date until now was that Christopher Walken beat Apocalypse from Marvel Comics 
simply because he could dance. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? How does that to work? This, to this day, I am still furious because <laughs> I wanted Apocalypse to win, and all my friends said, "No, no, no! He can dance." I well, said, "What does that have to do with anything?" He's immortal. He can dance, so he wins. So, uh, are you guys gonna go with that? I don't yep. Yep. Stop by Dolph Lundgren and eat them. Yes. Why not? We want Dolph Lund We want Alf to continue on. Oh my God. <laughs> All right. It's official. <laughs> Alf sodomizes Dolph Lundgren and then eats him. <laughs> wow. Alf moving into the next round. I cannot believe this. Alf sodomizes the Galactus and eats him. <laughs> oh, God! Yikes! Oh, no, 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 no. Let's not go there yet. Please. <laughs> and this is uh, the Galactus. Okay. Last two characters in this round. We have Artemis and Trary. Super Assassin versus Voldemort. Well, um, no. I th Artemis and Trary might be really powerful. But I'm going to say Voldemort wins because all he has to do is hit him with a Vada Cadaver. And even though he can block it, he could, I don't know, uh, he, the gauntlets, he has to block it with the gauntlets, right? Well, that's what, uh, that's what I was just going to mention because I mentioned that in the last round. Artemis and Cherry can absorb and, de and deflect the uh, any kind of magic. So Spoiler why, for a movie, guess what happens to Voldemort? Sorry, I couldn't hear that. I said, guess what happens? Spoiler for Voldemort in Harry Potter number two, part two, guess what happens to him? He dies. He reflect. <laughs> and, and no, 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 and not just that, it's called reflection. Yeah. He, he stabbed himself down with mirrors and he had to sit down and reflect. Uh, no, actually, the spell, a, a, a little spell that he recently used reflects. Oops, dumbass! It didn't work the first goddamn time. It didn't work this one. Excuse my Actually, language. It doesn't really. Ref I know exactly what happens. It doesn't really reflect. What happens is the wand isn't owned by him, so the wand just shoots him. Well, duh, but still reflects the spell back at him. It shoots. Okay, whatever. It's the anyway, same damn thing. We know what happens. happens. Spoiler uh, alert for everyone who haven't watched Harry Potter two. Too bad. This is our thing. If you don't like spoilers, don't listen. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be that harsh, but just. Um, I don't know. I think, I think if nobody knows that by now, then I mean it's been how many years since the book came out? Uh, yeah, everyone knew what happened. Everyone uh, has a wiki. 12? For Christ's sake, if you don't want to, if you're too damn lazy to read the flipping wiki or you know re pick up a book, you deserve you deserve to be uh, spoiled. But seriously, okay. well, here's the thing about Artemis and whatever the heck his last name is with I. Um. <laughs> I don't think we're gonna try to pronounce his name. It says that he has gauntlets that do that. Yep, he wears a gauntlet. The gauntlets can re reflect magical energy, but mm -hmm. if you don't, but the thing is, if you shoot him from the back and he doesn't know that the gauntlets, he, he can't block it, so he'd die. You won't be able to attack Artemis and Trey from the back. I don't know that Voldemort can just go invisible. He's yeah, good. We don't know but the extent of his powers. He could just poof out of existence. But that's, uh, I just want to mention, that's one of the reasons why Artemis and Cherry is still alive. Because he lives in a magical world filled with magic users who would very much like to see him dead. Yet you know what he's happens? still alive. This is what happens is during the battle. That smart. Ah. He's that smart and he prepares. Well, constantly. here you go. But wait a minute. We, we, already, we already said that these guys can't prepare, it just happens. No, uh, okay, let me re rephrase that. He is smart enough to know not to leave himself open. Okay, but Voldemort can still go invisible and shoot him from any angle. Not until he's uh, noticed. He can't, it's because if we're not having them prepare, then Voldemort can't be invisible as soon as he enters. No, yeah, he can just say, use a spell and make himself invisible. Okay. We can go with that, but, uh, what do you think, Comet? Yeah. I don't know, I just want to see, I just want to see Alf kill him. <laughs> 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 Meh. Wow. Let's see. 
Let's see. Right, which, now, what, one? which one? Who who survives? Voldemort I, I, I like Voldemort's Voldemort. chances a little bit better because just because I like him because he's a like, cool and the actor's pretty awesome. So I was like, yeah, I vote Voldy. Voldemort. Uh, Moldy. I'll like, call him Voldemort. I like Artemis though because he's got a sword that can kill anything, so he might have a chance against Galactus. Ah, uh, yeah. no chance. Well, I think Alf could kill Galactus. Don't worry, it'll happen. No, I don't think Artemis could even Artemis could kill Galactus because Artem- Galactus doesn't use magic, and he awesome. has to get. And also, Artemis would have to get into space. And you think Voldemort is space worthy travel, or travel space worthy, or whatever? Yep. So okay. he goes invisible and uh, somehow up. manages to get him. All right, we'll call that Artemis. Yeah, like, a, like a ricochet, ricochets off his short sword and hits him in the head. I don't know exactly. Artemis and Trary defeated by Voldemort. By Snake Man. Do, 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 do. He, was, hey, he was defeated by a man with no nostrils. Or no nose. <laughs> <laughs> he got defeated by a bald man with no nose. Ain't he talented? <laughs> and we are now into the semifinals. And one character gets a free pass into the I finals. Hope, I hope it's Galactus. <laughs> Well, he's going to win anyway, I think. Well, the free pass into the... F- oh, my God. The free fi- pass into the finals is Alf. <laughs> so that <laughs> final battle <laughs> is Voldemort versus Galactus. Galactus wins. He just uses the power of cosmic and blows him up into smithereens. Yeah. <laughs> he goes back to his... He's just having fun with this whole battle, isn't he? He's just like, okay, who's next? Oh, I don't care who you are, Power Cosmic. Excellent. <laughs> the same thing he does in the in the Marvel comics. You you are you like are an ant unto the sun, trying to attack the sun. <laughs> You're dead. Basically, he just annihilates the Earth. So that means no more Voldemort. Yeah, because somewhere on that Earth there are seven Horcruxes, and as soon as those are dead, that's it. Voldemort, you suck. You're dead. Beat the kid. Uh, how, uh, Ooh, now beat this the is kid. the ultimate battle. Ooh, Alf the versus Galactus. The how did you, you know what I'm picturing here right now? I'm picturing I'm, much I'm, laughing to be had. Well, I'm, I'm picturing that scene in uh, Lord of the Rings and Two Towers where the king is sitting there on his horse and he's like how did it come to this how did it come to this it's like Galactus you know, I, versus Alf for the finals if, if Alf had fought uh, Voldemort I would have thought it would be funny Voldemort tries to kill him he goes wait I'm a puppet oh That's my god funny. Potter puppet pals no yeah I, I kind of I guess more like Alf it just realizes that he's a puppet and, and and automatically dies because he doesn't have any life. Um, I think that Ga- Galactus um, would not even... What, what Galactus would do is look at Alf, look at the ultimate nullifier, look at Alf, and crush Alf in his, in his, with his pinky. He or would his Q- fart and or, kill him. Or his Q-tips, I don't know. You know what I think would be even more interesting? I, I think, think Galactus... Bird? in his all-powerful mind, takes small pity on Alf, grants him a very small amount of pos- power cosmic, and makes, makes him, him his herald. herald. <laughs> yeah, he makes him his herald. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> or you know what would be even funnier? If he turned Alf into a cat and ate him. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I love this idea of Alf having the power cosmic. Or at least a small is- part of it. Alpha's so he becomes the new herald. He he becomes the new herald, and because Galactus uh, doesn't exactly die from old age, he just waits until Alf gets into a battle that he can't win, and he dies. You no, know, that should be on the on the uh, the cover art for this thing. Uh, Alf as the herald of Galactus. <laughs> <laughs> when you can't call in any other team, you call in the A team, known as Alf. Call it.
<laughs> I think I'm calling the God team Galactus and Alf. I thought it was. I Galf. thought it was A for Alf. Galf. 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 Yeah. So Galactus. I, I, like, I like that ending. I thought I thought the the best upset was Alf Alf beating uh what was it da- Dolph? Dolph. Dolph. Yeah, <laughs> that's going to go down in the history of uh, major upsets. And that that's on on par with the uh, apocalypse versus uh, whoever it was. Christopher Walken. Christopher Walken was fun. I we did once. Uh, oh, go ahead. I was. I'm gonna say. I still think that that is ludicrous. You can't beat someone by dancing. Yeah, you can't look at Michael Jackson. Unless you're Princess Tutu. Oh. Okay, unless you're Princess Tutu. Thank you for agreeing with me with that because if you're listening out there, I know some of my friends listen to this. He wouldn't have won. Yeah. He's Christopher Walken. Yeah, he's awesome. But he can't win by dancing. Well, well, if he was MJ, he could uh, dance around and grab his crotch and go, woo, like this, and make you know make everybody wonder if he's actually human. Maybe, yeah. Christi- maybe Christopher Walken as the headless horseman could win because the headless horseman is immortal. Okay, that's the only way he can win. Well, I did want to mention that previously, again, before we started uh, recording these character cast tournaments, we had the biggest uh, lopsided victory. We had Galactus versus Snarf. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that was uh, the, the entire argument was Snarf, and that's it, because Snarf never finished. What do, you, what do you think about the new Thundercats they're making? I loves it. It looks gorgeous. It's Japan yes. animation. It's beautiful. Pan, uh, I've, I've already got some of the cover art for it, and it's gorgeous. Panthro, my favorite Thundercat, is on my desktop. My Twitter stuff has the Thundercats on it. What do you think? Thunder, Thunder, Thundercats. Oh, oh, by the way, they have uh, the original voice of Lionel doing Lionel's father, which is fantastic. And they uh, have some really, really phenomenal voice acting talent. It looks good. It's supposed to be really dark as well. It makes me so happy. I want them to put them on Adult Swim so we can have PG-13 and we can really watch some really evil stuff. Make, uh, it, R. make it R-rated. No, PG-13. That way we can keep it with we can keep it within a certain perspective. Make it like Family Guy, like TV-14. That would be magnificent. You know what? I, th- I, I think the weirdest the weirdest uh, way they killed the enemy in Thundercats I remember is that was that uh, female like space police person whatever her name is hit her and Lionel are fighting this like mud monster and they kill it with soap. That was just so weird to me. Die. Have some soap. Well, yeah, that's was, yep. that's uh, that's it. We we've, we've got Galactus as the ultimate winner. Which means he won't be returning. Aww. Oh, I'm so sorry. You win, you fucking moron. But he gets, uh, he does get his place in the retirement hall of fame for the character chaos tournament. And that's it. Any closing thoughts? What do you guys think was the uh, highlights of the show? You never know, father. Oh wait. <clears throat> Alf sodomizing somebody. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we'll ever forget that one. Oh, All right, I got well, something that's memorable. One moment. Somebody, if somebody's listening and you're an artist, we need art of that. We need it now. Here you are. And that's a wrap for the character. Oh yeah. Tournament. As we close out with the music. From the TV show, actually, so it's just, it's just actually very fitting. I am sorry. This man is always one comment. Yes, sir. Bad Mr. Pumpkin. Yay! Yay, we have finished! But I wish to thank everybody for stepping in for the CCT. I, I personally wish to issue out a personal congratulations for Slorg and Mary Bissner for being awesome people! Woo! Woo! And. Additionally, as Al plays us out, I wish to I wish to say, stay tuned, folks. It only gets more insane, more epic fun, more epic people and creatures and laughter coming right up yep. here on CCT. And if you have characters you'd like to submit, head over to thesport.com, visit the forums, 
Character Chaos Tournament forum and submit them there. We will use probably all of them in the future. So if, you're, if yours doesn't make the cut this week, don't worry, it'll probably be in the coming weeks. Absolutely. Just yep, keep sending them in, folks. sponsored by Christopher Walken. Right. <laughs> Not yeah. really. Because he can dance. Yeah, today, today's in Crazy and Insultry is brought to you today by the letters F, U, C, and the numbers 6 and 9. <laughs> okay. And that, as they say, is a good one, folks. So say say goodbye, folks. Later, y'all. Later. Have a good night, all, and God bless.